In this video, we are going to be looking at the second family of lipids, which has to do with steroids. Okay. So as I mentioned in the beginning of these videos, steroids are going to be specifically identified by having this six member ring followed by six member ring, six member ring, five member ring motif. That motif is known as a steroid nucleus. As you can see, we're going to have three cyclohexane rings or motifs because what happens is that as long as you have th that doesn't need to be a cyclohexane, it could also be a benzene, but as long as you have the six carbon atoms in a row, that is going to be considered um, a steroid nucleus. As you can see, even though I numbered um, the different rings, they are designated as an A ring, B ring, C ring, or D ring. But in order for something to have or, or to be determined to be a steroid, it needs to have in its structure a steroid nucleus. So when it comes to the steroids that are present in the human body, understand that cholesterol is the most important and abundant steroid in the human body. It has a hydroxyl group on carbon-3, and it has a double bond between carbon-5 and 6, and it has methyl groups at carbon-10 uh, and 13, and it has an alkyl chain on carbon-17. Understand that the specific uh, motifs that are present around the steroid nucleus of cholesterol, which has been highlighted in the dark yellow color, you don't need to know the specific um, substituents present just know that uh, cholesterol is the most important abundant steroid in the body when it comes to cholesterol remember cholesterol is obtained only from animal products so meats milk eggs is sources of cholesterol understand that cholesterol is synthesized in the liver and it is needed for cell membrane structure, it is needed in the brain, and also in nerve tissue. We also need cholesterol in order to synthesize steroid hormones and even some fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin D. Now, the problem with cholesterol is that if we have it in high amounts in the body, it can actually clog arteries, okay, and it can form plaque. For those of you that have taken already anatomy, you have seen different uh, histology slides. And here we have the comparison of a normal artery, uh, artery to one in which is um, clogged with cholesterol plaques, okay? Understand that there are other important molecules that have um, that are uh, derived from cholesterol and one of those <clears throat> is bile salts so bile salts are actually synthesized in the liver from cholesterol but they are stored in the gallbladder the reason why bile salts are important is because they have polar and nonpolar regions that act like soaps and they make fat soluble in water okay so Somebody that has undergone um, surgery and their gallbladder has been removed, they cannot process fats as well or oils as well in the body because now they don't have a storage of bile salts, okay? Also, another role for bile salts is that they help in the absorption of cholesterol. So, another thing that has been observed is that when somebody has large amounts of cholesterol, and it accumulates in the gallbladder, it actually forms gallstones. And then to give you a picture of how gallstones look like, you can see in the bottom image in this slide. 